speaking from 21 south street i think i'm probably thinking way too much today and i need to stop thinking and read a ruskin bun story maybe i came in the spring and took the room on the roof it was a long low building which housed several families the roof was flat except for my room and the chimney i don't know whose room owned the chimney but my room owned the roof and from the window of my room i owned the world but only from the window the banyan tree just opposite was mine and its inhabitants my subjects there were two squirrels a few mina a crow and at night a pair of flying foxes the squirrels were busy in the afternoons the birds in the mornings and evenings the foxes at night i wasn't very busy that year not as busy as the inhabitants of the banyan tree there was also a mango tree but that came later in the summer when i met koki and the mangoes were ripe at first i was lonely in my room but then i discovered the power of my window i looked out on the banyan tree on the garden on the broad path that ran beside the building and out over the roofs of other houses over roads and fields as far as the horizon the path was not a very busy one but it held variety an aya with a baby in a pram the postman and even din himself the fruit seller the toy seller calling their wares in high pitched familiar cries the rent collector a pose of cyclists a long chain of school girls a lame beggar all passed my way the way of my window in the early summer a tonga came rattling and jingling down the path and stopped in front of the house a girl and an elderly lady climbed down and a servant unloaded their baggage they went into the house and the tonga moved off the horse snorting a little the next morning the girl looked up from the garden and saw me at my window she had long black hair that fell on her waist tied with a single red ribbon her eyes were black like her hair and just as shiny she must have been about 10 or 11 years old hello i said with a friendly smile she looked suspiciously at me who are you she asked i am a ghost she laughed and her laugh had a gay mocking quality you look like one i didn't think her remark particularly flattering but i had asked for it i stopped smiling anyway most children don't like adults smiling at them all the time what have you got up there she asked magic i said she laughed again but this time without mockery i don't believe you she said why don't you come up and see for yourself she hesitated a little but came round to the steps and began climbing them slowly cautiously and when she entered the room she brought a magic of her own where's your magic she asked looking at me in the eye come here i said and i took her to the window and showed her the world she said nothing but stared out of the window uncomprehendingly at first and then with increasing interest 
and after some time she turned around and smiled at me and we were friends i only knew that her name was koki and that she had come with her aunt for the summer months i didn't need to know anything more about her and she didn't need to know anything about me except that i wasn't really a ghost not the frightening sort anyway she came up my stairs nearly every day and joined me at the window there was a lot of excitement to be had in her own world especially when the rains broke at the first rumblings women would rush outside to retrieve the washing from the clothes line and if there was a breeze to chase a few garments across the compound when the rains came they came with a vengeance making a bog of the garden and a river of the path a cyclist would come riding furiously down the path an elderly gentleman would be having difficulty with an umbrella naked children would be frisking about in the rain sometimes koki would run out of the roof and shout and dance in the rain and the rain would come through the open door and window of the room flooding the floor and making an island of the bed but the window was more fun than anything else it gave us the power of detachment we were deeply interested in the life around us but we were not involved in it it is like a cinema said koki the window is the screen the world is the picture soon the mangoes were ripe and koki was in the branches of the mango tree as often as she was in the room from the window i had a good view of the tree and we spoke to each other from the same height we ate far too many mangoes at least 5 a day let's make a garden on the roof suggested koki she was full of ideas like this and how do you propose to do that i asked it's easy we bring up mud and bricks and make the flower beds then we plant the seeds we will grow all sorts of flowers the roof will fall in i predicted but it didn't we spent two days carrying buckets of mud up the steps to the roof and laying out the flower beds it was very hard work but koki did most of it when the beds were ready we had the opening ceremony apart from a few plants collected from the garden below we had only one species of seeds pumpkin we planted the pumpkin seeds in the mud and felt proud of ourselves but it rained heavily that night and in the morning i discovered that everything except the bricks had been washed away so we returned to the window amaina had been in a fight with a crow perhaps and the feathers had been knocked off its head a bougainvillea that had been climbing the wall had sent a long green shoot in through the window koki said now we can't shut the window without spoiling the creeper then we will never close the window i said and we let the creeper into the room The rains passed and an autumn wind came whispering through the branches of the banyan tree. There were red leaves on the ground and the wind picked them up and blew them about so that they looked like butterflies. I would watch the sun rise in the morning, the sky all red until its first rays splashed the window sill and crept up the walls of the room. And in the evening Koki and I watched the sun go down in a sea of fluffy clouds. Sometimes the clouds were pink and sometimes orange. They were always colored clouds framed in the window. I'm going tomorrow, said Koki one evening. I was too surprised to say anything. You stay here forever, don't you? she said. I remained silent. When I come again next year, you'll still be here, won't you? I don't know.
I said. But the window will still be here. Oh, do be here next year, she said. Or someone will close the window. In the morning, the tonga was at the door and the servant, the aunt and Koki were in it. Koki waved to me at my window. Then the driver flicked the reins, the wheels of the carriage creaked and rattled, the bells jingled. Down the path went the tonga, down the path and through the gate, and all the time Koki waved. And I, and from the gate, I must have looked like a ghost, standing alone at the high window amongst the bougainvillea. When the tonga was out of sight, I took the spray of the bougainvillea in my hand and pushed it out of the room. Then I closed the window. It would be only opened when the spring and koki came again. You were listening to The Window by Ruskin Bond from The Adventures of Rusty. We'll come back with another story another day. Till then, don't forget the address. It's 21 South Street. Goodbye.